imagine a man living 50 years ago, taken from his time and brought into ours. If you asked him, what's been the biggest change? What do you think he'd say? <laughs> I hope you answered that the way, same way I would answer it. Yeah, technology. But specifically, I think the answer, at least if you were some, someone like me, it would be the internet. Our ability to communicate with anyone across the globe instantaneously in all forms of media, our ability to access information instantaneously as well, it's unparalleled in human history, and it's changed almost everything we've done. So what's next? What comes after this? Well, I think the next thing we're going to see in the internet is, sorry, is uh, an intelligent access to that information, something where you're not just searching, you're not just accessing, but you're actually searching intelligently. So for example, 10 years ago, if you wanted to find out information about a movie, you could. You could ask Jeeves or Alta Vista or something, and you'd get some information. Today, you go onto Netflix, and it'll tell you a movie that you might like based on other movies that you've liked. This is new. This is information that's intelligent. It's taking things that computers know about you and suggesting something. So how does that work? And what's going to happen in the future? So I'm here to talk about statistics in the next age of information. But don't worry, because my specialty is actually talking about movies. So I hope you're going to enjoy this as well. So let's go through something I did. It's called 100 Years of Set Locations. And I took 2001 films, top movies on IMDb, and I found about 10,000 other set locations where there are films, and I put them on a Google map. Uh, you can play with this on the website, Box Office Quant, but let's just give you a qu quick demo to uh, play around with it. So zoom in here, enhance, enhance. All right, whoops. Downtown San Francisco. Every dot is one or more films, and so you can just click around and see what was filmed everywhere. So, for example, what was filmed at the Golden Gate Bridge? X-Men Last Stand, Coach Carter, View to a Kill, a whole bunch of movies. How about uh, Alcatraz? <laughs> yeah, The Rock. <laughs> Escape from Alcatraz, that makes sense, right? Batman Forever? I don't know what scene, but there you go. Uh, so I brought this up because I want to talk about space. When you look at a map, what you're looking at is longitude and latitude. North, south, east, and west, and you don't even think about this as math. You just think about this as something that comes naturally. And I want you to hold on to that feeling. Because not all math has to be the tricky thing that a lot of us felt like it was in high school, including myself. Uh, a lot of it can be simply explained by just understanding the spaces that we can see around us. And it's only limited by the spaces we can dream up. So let's dream up another. I wanted to answer the question, are sequels worse than their original movies? You hear this a lot as a film fan, yeah. A lot of you are thinking about sequels coming up or sequels you just saw, Iron Man 2. wasn't as good as the original. Still kind of good, but you're wondering. So I took Rotten Tomatoes scores of the original, which is the percent of movie critics that liked it, versus the Rotten Tomatoes score of the sequel on the y-axis on the left there. And so, for example, I want to look at Pirates of the Caribbean. You can see it's about 80 points to the right over there. That means about 80% of movie critics liked the original. It's about 55 points high. That means about 55% of movie critics liked the sequel. That's 80 to 55. More people liked the original than liked the sequel. So it's generally considered a better original. If you're having trouble seeing that immediately, just think of this line. Anything to the right is where the original was better liked. Anything to the left is where the sequel was better liked. So if you look at all movies and you put them all up there at once, you think there'd be more to the right or the left? Well, let's have a look. This is 259 movies, just about every movie that had a sequel in the last 30 years. The size of the dot is how big a movie it was, how many people saw it. <laughs> the one at the top is Star Trek II, uh, Wrath of Khan. <laughs> All right, so let's find a new space. I wanted to look at movie scripts, so I wanted to specifically count the number of certain words in the script. I wanted to think about love and money. <laughs> yeah, kind of describes the movie, right? All right, so let's see how, uh, how these showed up, categorized by genre. All right, so let's start at the top. Crime, it's way up high, right? A lot about money, not too much about love, that makes sense. How about on the right? We got romance, a lot about love, not so much about money. It's what a rom romance is supposed to be about, right? How about the bottom left? Horror and sci-fi. Not about love, not about money. It's about <laughs> spaceships and lasers and axe murders and whatever. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense though, right? Um, but I want you to think very closely about how this is uh, not just about love and money here, but how close they are together. They're overlapping even. You can tell that horror and sci-fi are really similar genres. 
And so here we have kind of abstract concepts of love and money and genre in general, and yet we, here we have a quantifiable distance. So if someone said to you, I like horror movies, what else should I try? You'd be better off recommending sci-fi than you would romance. And so this is just the start of how Netflix works. It's only a piece, but it's actually kind of a big piece. So I want you just to, just to think about other spaces. What else can you put onto a grid like this that would explain part of your everyday experience? And I want to show you one thing that I didn't do. It was developed by MIH SWAT Labs. It's called the Facebook Social Graph. I think it's really cool. You can check it out on Facebook. It's not affiliated with me. I just think it's cool. And these are actually all, all of my friends. And I would actually be in the center there on the left, uh, surrounded by my high school friends, and then down to the right is college friends. And each pink circle there is a different group of my friends. So this is actually taking Facebook data and putting on information about me into a grid. So from 50 years from now, when your kid is talking to their iPhone 25, which is Siri projected as a holographic whatever, <laughs> and they're asking it for relationship advice. I want you to wonder, how did we get here? How did we get to the point where a computer is telling us something that is entirely emotional and intuitive? And I want you to think that in five minutes, we went from north, south, east, and west to friendship. Imagine what we can do in the next 50 years. Thank you.